This is episode 2000 of our space shuttle build, our bus shuttle build. Episode two of our shuttle bus build. Right, this is the shuttle bus channel. Yes. Not the space shuttle channel. Right across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles, turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. This week, the first thing that we did was go to Home Depot and sell our souls for some plywood. Plywood is easily twice as expensive now than when we did our first build. Yeah, and it was high then. It's all up of like 200 something percent, I think. Making breakfast. You gotta have a good breakfast before you get into all this stressful bus stuff. I'm making hot matcha today, which makes no sense because it's one of our warmest work days yet. We made the last minute decision to pull a third board up from the floor. We were kind of walking around the wheel well on the right side and started to feel a little uncomfortable with how spongy it was. And we decided to just cut a small chunk out of that board and replace it because if we were unsure about it, it's best to just do it right get it out of there, replace it, because this floor is the basis of your entire pyramid. It's the bottom of your build. You want it to be structurally sound. Yeah, most of the board was completely fine, probably like 80, 90% of it. Found where the support beam would be, because fortunately we had the opposite board pulled up, so we knew exactly where that would be. Split it right there, so the new board and the old board would have equal support on that beam. To do the floor, we had to clean up the frame first. So we had to scrape off old adhesive, angle grind, and drill out a couple screws that didn't want to come out before we could then put the new boards on there. With our last bus, we had to pull the entire floor, and I spent two days, I think, with a scraper oh, yeah. and a chisel, scraping all the adhesive and rust off of the frame of that first bus. So I personally was having flashbacks to that horrible first experience. Uh -huh. scraped the frame completely clean, wiped it down so it is ready for the new floorboards because we do have to put adhesive on these so they had to be clean and they also had to be even so that the board wouldn't be raised or kind of manipulated in any way. So we had to use the angle grinder to take off some screws that were stuck in there. But we finally got it to this point. It's even, it's ready for the new boards that we just waterproofed and sealed. Next up was to cut the brand new pieces of wood to patch in. So now we had three we had to replace. We got 19 30 seconds sheathing from Home Depot and that's what we replaced it with. It was as similar to the original wood as we could find. It's the moment of truth. Does the most complicated cut fit? Fit almost. Uh, yeah, I think so. Push on it. Yeah, yeah you got it. Should be fine. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm taking the plywood that we just cut for the floor, the brand new pieces, and I'm going to coat the bottom and eventually the top in a marine 
varnish. This is an oil-based varnish. We use this on the floor in our first bus. It's by Rust-Oleum Marine Coating Spar Varnish. thing about shuttle buses is that they are completely made of wood on the bottom. The metal framing is just holding bare wood. And so it needs some sort of waterproof coating. Otherwise, all the water that gets sprayed up under the bus will eventually rot the wood. So these new pieces of wood are completely waterproofed. The old pieces did have an undercoating on them and they were covered with glue from the rubber floor. So I couldn't have used this waterproofing varnish on them anyway, but we think that from the glue and the undercoating that they have that they'll be perfectly fine. They're semi waterproofed how they are. So we just wanted to make the new pieces that had zero waterproofing kind of up to the standards of what they originally had in there. And I think we accomplished that. We are going to scrub the roof first to clean it. And then we're gonna coat it in Henry's Tropical and that will hopefully take care of all of the leaks that we had in the sides of the seam, but I'm also gonna do a little bit of caulk up there. So we're gonna get the roof all patched up today before we do the roof rack. When we washed the roof to start applying the Tropical, you have to scrub it down just with soap and water. I was dumping buckets of water over the bus yeah. and Drew said, hey, you should probably come look at this. And I went down in the bus and he dumped a bucket over the roof yeah. and I saw a literal waterfall coming into our bus through the top of our window seam. It was flowing in like a waterfall. <laughs> yeah, you can see why that piece of wood deteriorated so quickly over just four years. It wasn't just a little leak. We just washed the roof so that we can do the tropical seal on it. And we came back inside to find this. Look at all that water. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, now we know why this back corner was rotted so badly. It's a good thing that we already waterproofed this piece of wood because we would be in trouble if we did it. <laughs> Basically the window was never suctioned or pulled tight to the body of the bus. So at the top there was just a gap, the water was just falling right in and any rain came down just basically directly exposing, that wood was directly exposed to it. So that's something we had to address immediately. And I mean, it's a lot Immediate, worse than I thought. <laughs> it was an emergency because we had rain coming up in the forecast and we were going to move on to install our insulation and subfloor. And you can't have those things just getting drenched when it's raining out. So we had some butyl tape mm -hmm. left over from the first build and we made the emergency decision <laughs> to remove that window, yeah. reseal it, and put it back in, caulk the outside with a removable caulk, so just kind of a temporary sealant um, before we do all our windows. Ideally, we wanted to do all our windows at the same time, but we really needed to get that huge, huge leak fixed just so it doesn't ruin what we're doing before we're ready to seal all the windows. Yeah, a small leak is one thing, but that would just ruin the wood pretty quickly. So even with it waterproofed, it's, that's just too much. Tropical is 100% silicone. It goes on just two coats in opposite directions. It's really easy to apply. I liked it a lot on the first build. It fixed all of our leaks. Yeah. We had to do a lot less patching with uh, caulk and all that sort of stuff. So we use it again on this build. It did fix those tiny pinhole leaks. Freezing. It's horrible out there. Ugh, it's cold and rainy. It's the worst. For our next step, we framed out for our subfloor. 
So we used one by three boards and we measured those 18 inches off center from center to center of each board, 18 inch space from front to back and as well from side to side. In the higher traffic areas, like right down the center where you step a lot, we space them a bit closer. Um, we're gonna be putting 23 30 seconds board on top of that, which is pretty stiff. But if the gaps are too big and you step right in the middle, you will kind of get some sag. So your high traffic right down the hallway part, you might want to space them a little bit tighter like we did. The benefit of framing out most of your flooring 18 inches off center is that most of your insulation cuts are going to be the same or very similar. So if you just kind of frame it out randomly and you don't measure it, your insulation, each square is going to be completely different and it'll just take you more time to cut all your pieces and get it in the floor. So we're trying to save a little bit more time. We're trying to work smarter on this build. And so if you can get most of them to be the same, then you just cut a bunch of those pieces and pop them right in. Yeah, and we feel that interval of 18 inches off center is pretty good. It really depends on the board you're putting on top. If you're doing a thinner board, like half inch, you might wanna space them a little closer. And if you got like a whole one inch board, you probably have more leeway to space them even further. So that's just kind of a feel thing because the things that are on the side, like if you built out a cabinet or your bed, they're gonna be distributing that weight equally over all their point of contact. So if it's a square and it's say it's 200 pounds, it's 200 pounds distributed around that square. If I'm a 200 pound human and I step on one foot directly in the middle, that's all my force plus the force of pushing off. It's a lot different. So that's where you need to make sure that's pretty strong. And the other stuff is just, it's kind of balanced out. So it's not a huge deal as long as you do frame it. We got a few questions last week about the Unistrut that runs on the floor of shuttle buses. We have not removed any of the Unistrut from the floor of any of our buses. We just don't feel that it's worth the time. You would have to probably get an angle grinder and grind it out of there because it's welded into the frame. For us, it's just not worth it. So on our one by threes, I used a router to just mark the spaces where the two sides of the Unistrut were, and I just ran a router right down those two spots, and then it laid flat right on the floor. For us, that is a much easier option than spending all the time of removing that Unistrut from the floor. Once you notch it out, the one by threes will just lay flush with your flooring your insulation will sit on top of where the Unistrut is, no problem because it's foam. It'll just push up into it. It won't raise your floor at all. So we decided it wasn't worth the time and we've never removed any of them. Yeah, you wanna notch those out. Otherwise you're gonna get this kind of effect on your floor where the middle's gonna be curved up a little bit and you really don't want that. Framing is finally finished and now it's time for the insulation. After we finished framing out our floor with the one by threes, they all get screwed down into the original plywood flooring of the bus. Then we cut our half inch poly ISO insulation board into each of the sizes of the squares. Most of them were the same, but there were a few kind of original cuts you had to make in there, but we got all of them placed in each of the squares. So the floor, is fully insulated. We chose half inch and we chose one by threes because of the height of the bus. Some buses, you don't have to worry about height at all. If you're shorter or you have six foot seven inches of clearance, like we've seen in mm -hmm. some shuttles are very tall, yeah. then you don't have to worry about it so much. I would insulate with one inch if height is not an issue, but Height is an issue in our bus, so we went with half inch. You don't need to secure it down with anything because it's gonna be sandwiched in between your flooring. The floor insulation is not the most yeah, important. Yeah, that's pretty debatable of like how much the floor insulation really does. I'm sure you want some of it, but if you have more space to work with, put it in the ceiling, because heat rises, that's gonna hold your heat in, and it's gonna keep more the heat out when the sun's beating down as well. Right. So the the floor, yes, it's good to put some in, but it's I don't think it's that big of an issue. Once we did all that, we cut the pieces of the 23 30 seconds sheathing 
and laid all that on top, screwed it down with two and a half inch screws and our subfloor was complete. Cutting our final pieces of the subfloor, the very top of it, and we're going around the most complicated part right now, which is where the gas fill spot is, and it comes in, and then we also have to go around the wheel wells. So I measured all the little changes and angles, and now I'm putting it on the piece of wood. So pray for us that this fits. <laughs> it is the moment of truth. Yeah, this one's pretty weird, so we'll see. Might have to trim it. Does it fit? Yes! Yay! is finally done. It took us so long to get to this point in our first build and we're already here. This is what we accomplished in week two. I feel like with this bus build, we're approaching it in a healthier way. Our first build, we had sold our van to pay for that bus. We didn't have a place to live. We were staying with family. So it was a big rush. We didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. It was very stressful. And this build, we're building it to sell. We're sharing all this information with you. We're filming it. I just, I'm having so much more fun on this build. It's smoother because before you do all the hours of actually working on the bus, but then you would call it a day and your brain would still have to keep going to figure things out to research because we didn't know the process as well. And now we have the process. So it's just kind of like, okay, we do this, then we do this, then we do that. We know what to order, when to order it. So it's, it's definitely a lot less stressful in that aspect. And we want to thank all of you guys for being on this journey with us. We're only on week two. We have so much farther yeah. to go. Thank you guys for being here. And you know what to do. We'll see you next time. Later, guys.